from a secret location in Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. You know, I'm really starting to get annoyed with your program. And now, and now here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Before we do anything this hour, I have to explain a little something to you. Um, we're going to uh, play you a commercial, and I'm going to see if you've seen this commercial. And I want you to know that depending on the part of the country you're in, it uh, it is for one restaurant or another in Many Western states, the commercial runs, as it does here in Los Angeles, for a restaurant chain called Carl's Jr. And in many other states, the company that owns Carl's Jr., CKE Restaurants, they own a chain called Hardee's. Hardee's, I think, predated Carl's Jr., and uh, Carl's Jr. bought Hardee's and has slowly been turning Hardee's into like in a southeastern version of Carl's Jr., and many times they run some of the same commercials. They have some of the same products. Sometimes they call the products by different names at Hardee's, but they have the same advertising. So I'm going to play the Carl's Jr. version of this commercial. But we have a guest who's going to come on here who uh, I'm sure he's only seen the Hardee's version. So uh, have you seen this commercial? It was once believed that the world was not round. Just the bun. But flat. Just flat. Okay, class. Well, I like him really hot. You got a butt minus. Flatter makes a better rear. Yeah. Stand sideways, girl. You disappear. Hey. Flat buns. I like flat buns. I like the flat buns. The one. patty melt on flat buns. Only like at Carl's Jr. All right. There was the spot. There it was. Now, uh, this spot has got people up in arms. Now, the next thing you're going to hear is a report. This is from a TV station in Nashville, Tennessee. From WKRN Television. And uh, I know, I know we all know Mr. Garrison. This is not Mr. Garrison. It just sounds like him. We've heard basically from our members. We've heard from um, school board members. Earl Wyman, the president of the Tennessee Education Association, says he's received email from colleagues from Nevada to Virginia. The commercial is absolutely atrocious and disrespectful to the teaching profession. Okay, class. This is the commercial at the center of the uproar, a Hardee's ad for its flat bun patty melt that features a teacher dancing as students rap about flat buns. Compounding the issue, the ad campaign hits after a series of alleged sex scandals involving teachers, including the Pamela Rogers case in Warren County that gained national attention. It's certainly in the minds of the public, and and we, we think it's time for us to focus on teachers in the classroom doing their jobs and students doing their jobs. We brought the concern about the ad to the executive vice president of Hardy's Marketing, Brad Haley. Haley says the ad is meant to be silly, not serious. If the ad were taken literally, I could I, I would certainly understand uh, people being concerned about it, but, but it is a... Uh, it was designed to be funny. The lyrics are ridiculous. The the premise is is, is really over the top uh, and and designed to be, as I said, funny and kind of irreverent and and not to be taken, not to be taken literally. Hardy's is aware some people may be too young to understand the intended light tone of the ad, so it's only scheduled to run after 10 p.m. The TEA is asking anyone concerned to contact the restaurant chain. All right. <laughs> Now, we have on the line here Al Mance. He's executive director of the Tennessee Education Association. Al, thank you very much for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, Al, uh, your organization objects to this ad. Why? 
Well, uh, first of all, it is demeaning to teachers and particularly new teachers who are doing their best to try to improve student performance and maintain an orderly classroom. And frankly, it puts teachers, particularly young female teachers, in a poor light. Well, uh, I'm looking here in front of me at a list of teachers uh, with names like Pamela Rogers, Pamela Smart, Mary Kay Letourneau. Do these names sound familiar? Uh, they don't particularly sound familiar to me, no. Well, right in your own backyard, uh, let me read to you about Pamela Rogers, former model and beauty pageant contestant, also taught at Centertown Elementary School in McMinnville, Tennessee, uh-huh. arrested in February 2005 for allegedly having a three-month sexual relationship with a 13-year-old boy, okay. resigned her teaching position, charged with 15 counts of sexual battery, 13 counts of statutory rape, Sentenced to 270 days in prison in August 2005. Okay. Got an additional trouble in April 2006 for sending text messages, nude photos, and sex videos of herself to the same boy while using her father's cell phone. In July 2006, she was sentenced to serve eight years for violating her probation. And in January 2007, was given an additional two years for sending the photos. Would she be a member of your organization? No, she's not. Why not? Well, I guess that she didn't choose to be. Uh, but, but you just said you never heard of her. Maybe she is a Well, you, you know, I don't remember the names of uh, everyone who has been accused of or convicted of having uh, inappropriate relationships with teenagers. Do you know how long this list is? I beg your pardon? Do you know how long this list is that I'm looking at? No, I don't. Well, uh, Adrian Hockett, Alina Ward, Amanda Athey, Amber Jennings, Amber Marshall. How many names are on your list? I, I, you know what? They didn't total them up for me. I'm just looking at a list that goes on and on and on. Okay, don't there you, are more don't than you 60, think? Thousand teachers in Tennessee. But, how many people are on that list? Well, again, don't you think that the fact that these stories are out there provides an environment for a commercial like the one we're talking about? Well. I don't know which came first, uh, commercials of that sort or a general loosening of the the content of ads and that kind of thing. All all we are saying simply is that nothing should contribute to it. And we looked at this specific ad. Uh, Frankly, it played at a Titans game during one of the intermissions. and uh, That's the NFL Tennessee Titans, yes. Yeah, it, it was just over the top. And frankly, nobody cringes more than other teachers when someone is convicted of having or when someone is accused of having an inappropriate relationship with a student. Can you tell me specifically what your organization has done to weed out these bad apples? Uh, what stances have you taken? Uh, what uh, uh, measures have you taken uh, to get these people out of schools? We have many laws in Tennessee that address this situation. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about what laws are in Tennessee. I'm talking about the Tennessee Education Association, uh, what efforts have you made to weed out people like this? We have no authority at all to do anything with teachers. Have you advocated anyone. stronger legislation, stronger laws, have strong stronger sentencing? No, have you advocated it? Do we advocate what? Stronger sentencing, stronger laws. I mean, we many of these women the get off with probation. We advocate that the laws be enforced, and they are plenty adequate. In fact, that's how you got that list, because the laws were effective in catching people who did have those But then when they get caught, the punishment isn't that severe. Oh, I, I, I think you just called the names of people who were in jail. Is that not right? Uh, I called the names of people who were sentenced, but that doesn't mean they actually spent time in jail. Well, then that's a law. I mean, how did Pamela Rogers send text messages to a student if she was in prison for 270 days? I can't. uh, We can't do it. Because she wasn't in prison. But that's my point. You could take a stand. You could say these people deserve mandatory sentences, for example. Well, we have laws that require sentences. But, But again, we're not talking about just sentences. We're talking about the sentences being imposed and then served. Look, uh... We are a teacher's organization. We are not law enforcement, and we are not the courts. We have supported the Court of Ethics. We have supported the laws that uh, govern this profession. And, in fact, we would like to have control over the profession so that we would have more to say about who comes in and who stays. How about but how, how you vet, how about how you vet people to become teachers? Do you check their backgrounds? Do you check to see if they have criminal records before they become teachers in Tennessee? We supported a law, and in fact, Tennessee has a law that requires background checks on every hire. Mm-hmm. 
That's All right. right. And so you object to this commercial because of the the way it portrays teachers. You object to it because you think it's vulgar with all of that. What? Well. We are interested in boys and girls and schools and teachers, and we object to this because it uh, makes it more difficult for young teachers to keep order in the classroom. This does not target 18 to 34-year-olds. We're talking about sixth graders, people who are 11, 12 and, and up who are going to see these and uh, with all of the other things that distract Well, they, of course, are the, the they are the primary we customers. Else to help. They are the primary, and by the way, for the for uh, 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 purposes of being completely upfront here, I'm a former stockholder of this company, Carl, the Carl's Jr. Company, oh, okay. uh, CK, but I no longer own the stock, so I have no benefit to, to support them or not support them. Uh, but uh, just so, uh, uh, again, and this is the thing that, that I'm talking about, one thing I learned by when I was a stockholder at Carl's Jr., is that their primary target audience for for selling food is males 12 to 34 years old. Okay. That, that's their audience. Uh-huh. So they are trying to reach 12-year-olds and get them to buy thick burgers, which is what they call the $6 burger, I believe, at Hardee's. Um, they, they're trying to get guys 12 to 34 to buy their product. Don't you think this is an effective commercial that will sell the product? I think that this commercial seeks to sell the product with sexual content, and I think that's inappropriate for school-age boys and girls. And uh, you believe that, uh, and how about free enterprise? Do you have a problem with that? I don't have a problem with free enterprise unless it targets children. Uh Uh-huh, I understand, but there really is no sex in this commercial. If you have a young lady in a classroom writhing on a desk, dancing suggestively, that has a sexual content. Well, that, that is on television uh, 24 hours a day on some channel somewhere, whether it's MTV or VH1 uh, or various uh, variety shows, uh, uh, not to mention the fact that it's on the Internet. And this uh, this commercial is much milder than some of the stuff your uh, kids can log on to and look at on YouTube. We don't agree. You don't agree? You think that this is harsher than what you see on YouTube? I have no idea what's on YouTube because I don't watch that either. And I I will take your word for what's on uh, MTV and some of the others. This is the first that I've seen of an ad that has, uh, does as much damage as we think this does. It specifically targets school-age boys and girls and teachers, and we think that's un- inappropriate. All right, I'm going to play another commercial for you. This is for a national product. Hardee's is a regional fast food restaurant. Uh, this is for a national product, Clearasil. Now, I'm sure you remember the show American Bandstand, and you remember uh, Dick Clark, who was the host of American Bandstand, and he used to do live commercials for Clearasil. What's more mom and apple pie than Clearasil, right? Well, I don't think you'll find Dick Clark in a suggestive. Oh, I don't think you'll, well, because Dick Clark had a stroke, I don't think he's doing any commercials at this time. But well, he didn't do them in his prime. All right, but, but I want to play you now a commercial for Clearasil. This is a current commercial. And it is one of a series of three commercials that I know of for Clarissa playing right now. Here's when we brought her home from the hospital. Mm. Here's her first tooth. Isn't she cute? Yeah. Oh, and here she is, naked in the bath. <laughs> <laughs> you should see me now. No. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Clearasil Daily Face Wash. Visibly clearer skin without drying out your face. Clearasil may cause confidence. Do, or do you find offense in that commercial? Is that a teacher? Uh, no, but uh, you, you, well, you go I'm beyond... I'm familiar you, with that commercial, and frankly, I'm going to have to stick with what I know and what I've seen. But what I'm saying to you is, again, I'm, that's why I'm trying to get to the root of this. Do you, 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 you zigzag all over the place. One minute you talk about the image of teachers, another minute you're talking about the age group that might see the commercial. That's right. So, so you don't limit your comments to teaching unless I, <laughs> that I ask you about this commercial. You say well, you, you only want to talk about teaching. Which is it? What I'm dealing with is the commercial that had the teacher content and the classroom content. But then why, do you, why does it matter if 12-year-olds or 62-year-olds are seeing it? Why, if your only concern is the image of teachers, why does the age of the viewer matter? The age of the viewer? I'm, I'm interested in the age of the viewer if they are school age. Now, adults make their own decisions. While I may not agree with it, they certainly have the right to look at whatever they will. But I think that for a commercial to target boys and girls in classrooms, 
isn't appropriate with that kind of commercial. That's all that we are talking about. Right, we're going to take a break here, and we're going to take some phone calls from, uh, we have a bunch of listeners calling in here. And we're going to see what you think at 1-800-5800-TOM. They were talking about the commercial for, depends on what part of the country you live, whether it's Carl's Jr. Uh, uh, in Western states, the United States, or Hardee's in the Southeast and uh, the Midwest. Uh, it's a commercial uh, called Flat Buns, and it advertised a particular hamburger being sold both at Hardee's and Carl's Jr. And uh, uh, our guest, Al Mance, executive director of the Tennessee Education Association, very upset about the image of teachers that this uh, commercial uh, provides. And we'd like to see what you think about it. I'm single. I'm very attractive. I'm. Um, Are your breasts holding up? Very well. Really? I go to the gym three times a week and work out. So you're not a member of SAG? <laughs> the Tom Likas Show. The show. At one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom, that's our telephone number. All right, we'll take your calls for Al Manch, the executive director of the Tennessee Education Association, uh, an organization that has taken a stance against the flat buns TV commercial for Carl's Jr. in the West and Hardee's in the Midwest and the South. Let's go to your calls here at one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom Skyler on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, how are you? Great. So I'm just listening to what you're saying, and I totally don't understand what the big deal is about this commercial. Like, these people are just fueling the attention that it's getting. If they really have a problem with it, they should just shut up. I mean, honestly, it's a hot girl. How many teachers are there on, like, Boston Legal, whatever other shows on HBO that represent teachers all the time? It's like a kid's dream to have a sexy teacher. What's the big deal? Like, I think these teachers are, like, should be complimented by the fact that, like, a teacher can still be, like, an object of like a sexual desire it's a lifelong fantasy like i have a little brother there's nothing more that he would want than to have you know a sexy teacher as his like seventh grade teacher who the hell cares what's the big deal al uh, did you want to respond to that i don't really think there's a need to respond to that um we disagree with her uh that's all well, would he like to elaborate? What's I mean? What is the big deal? What, why is it? Why is that so upsetting? Versus these TV shows that are on. Why is one commercial spot so, you know, upsetting to this teacher that you know is like obviously not in the know about like the X generation and what they watch on TV? I think he should realize that there are a lot of other concerns besides this commercial, and he should probably inform himself about the students that he claims to know so well and teach before he criticizes a commercial. Well, I think uh, having been in this business uh, 30 years or more, uh, I think I know teenagers pretty well, and all I'm saying is even though there are other things out there that might also be distracting, there is no need to try to sell hamburgers with sexual content, and that's our objection to this. But, well, I mean, if you listen to Tom Likas' show, he, I mean, yesterday he even talked about how this is not a totalitarian, like, nation. We can't just reprimand someone and every, you know, it's like a free trade. Every single private company has the right to advertise however they want. We don't tell you how to teach all the time. We don't tell you how to do your job. Why is it your business to tell Carl Jr. how to sell their hamburgers? Obviously, they're doing a good job, right? Because obviously, this is getting a lot of attention, including from you. Well, this happened to have played in, in a venue where a lot of people saw it, and it caught our attention. I'm not sure what other commercials may be out there. We're concerned about this one. We think that boys and girls shouldn't be targeted with sexual content, especially displaying classrooms. Skylar, and thank you for the call. we think it's disrespectful to teachers, and we think it's damaging to students. Thank you, Skyler. Let's go to Robert on the Tom Likas show for Al Mance, the executive director of the Tennessee Education Association. Hello. America, I'm on the Tom Likas show. Uh, the guy from Tennessee, Mr. Sir, um, as far as Carl Jr. is concerned, they're not doing anything to selling hamburgers. If the demographic that they're trying to sell to, it may be children, yeah, it may be kids, but I have a seven-year-old daughter who loves the commercial. I have a 12-year-old nephew. All Him and all his friends love the commercial. They guys are trying to represent women 
with with this whole feminism whole thing and try to defend them. Let's say if this commercial was for one of the hot dog uh, uh, companies out there. Let's say uh, I'm not sure if I could even mention the name on on the show, but let's just say Wiener Schnitzel. And let's say if they said something like about big sausages, would you be here on the Tom Like a Show talking to people about that, or is it just because this whole world is spent around females and women and all that type of stuff? Would you be advocating for the brothers like that if they were talking about sausages? I didn't hear anything there that he's really interested in me responding to. And uh, this isn't a feminist thing. This is about public education, teachers, and students. Well, public education, teachers, and students, you should be advocating to get some books in in there with the kids. You should be advocating to get the teachers to get the right credentials so that they can be up in there instead of worried about what Carl Jr. is doing. Carl Jr. is for hours for these kids, maybe after school if they last key kids going home, grab a burger or something like that, and they go into the house. It's no problem with me. Like I said, I have two two kids in my family that love this commercial, that it basically got them to where they, you know, what they were supposed to do. And what is it? You put out commercials so that you can sell your product. Now you have these special interest, these special interest advocacy groups such as yourself that are coming here and that are tearing down this American fabric. America is built up so that these type of things can succeed. If you're clever enough to come up with a marketing scheme which make people buy, why should we have special interest advocates that come out and do these things for people. I understand you say it's for public, uh, it's for, for uh, you know, the public schools and all of that, but hey, take the guns out of the public schools. Start there. Start with, uh, start with uh, some books for the kids. You know, instead of going over here and, 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 and getting up this big corporation, I mean, myself, I'm not even into the big corporation type thing as far as how, you know, excuse me, I've got a truck here I'm uh, you know, going up to, but I'm not even into the corporations and, they, you know, all the commercials and all that type of stuff. But if they got a great commercial and they grabbed somebody and made them buy it, what's the big deal? I mean, these kids are out here exposed to way more than flat buns on the commercial, bro. And if it was for Winter Schnitzel, I would want to know if you'd be here advocating the same way you are. All right. Robert, thank you. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Uh, now, uh, the, the, Mr. Mance, I am um, in the advertising and marketing business. Um, I, I do commercials. I do voiceovers and what have you. And uh, one thing I know about this business is that uh, uh, the, the ad agencies, uh, the companies, the marketers, they're not dumb. They know that people like you are going to come out of the woodwork and issue a statement or have a press conference that you're going to go on CNN or the Today Show or whatever, and you're going to talk about how terrible this is. In the meantime, the names Hardee's and Carl's Jr. are going to be repeated 8 billion times. And not only that, at some point, the way this thing usually plays out is they'll announce, after they've gotten the maximum bang for their buck, they'll announce that you're right, they, they went too far, they'll pull the spot off after they've gotten millions and millions and millions of impressions, thanks to somebody like you who's not even on the payroll of the company. You realize that you're you're being used as a tool here. <laughs> well, you can't stop people from uh, making money off of a lot of things, but we think that this one went over the top. We are concerned about it. We expressed it, and uh, but you realize that, we're, for example, we're spending an hour of time giving free publicity to this company, and we're doing it because people like you have complained about the commercial. You may recall uh, something having nothing to do with hamburgers or teachers. You may recall back in the late 80s, there was a TV show called Married with Children, which was one of the lowest rated shows on TV until a woman in Detroit uh, decided to start a campaign to take the show off the air. And she went on every TV show possible saying how terrible Married with Children was. And my God, she couldn't have done a better job. She was on the payroll at Fox. What made Married with Children a hit was this woman in Michigan who kept writing letters and going on TV shows. And and, and suddenly Married with Children was the, the, the highest rated show on Fox back in the late 80s and early 90s. And, and that's what happens with these commercials. They put these controversial commercials on the air. And, uh, my God, we couldn't have gotten you out of central casting. You're perfect. I mean, you're per- you, you go on, you give the press conference, you're very articulate, very, uh, uh you know, clearly you've got credentials and uh, you've got a good title there and everything. And, and you'll, I, I don't know how many TV shows you've done, but I'm sure you'll be on CNN if you haven't already or, or, or Good Morning America or somewhere like that. And, and the company is licking their chops because, uh, every minute we're talking about this, people are thinking about their product. Does that bother you? (laughs) 
Well, I'm hoping that uh, what you are outlining there is not what occurs. And in fact, uh, oh, it, it, a lot of our members, me, it is what occurs. A lot of the people here in Tennessee will not react that way. And uh, frankly, what we were trying to do when I saw the commercial, what I did was call the company. And uh, this is not what they me say. doing this. This is the Tennessee Education Association. All right, what the company it represents say. teachers, and uh, we would like for this that we consider to be in very poor taste to be pulled. Was it's it just pulled? that simple with us? But did we they have... pull it? I beg your pardon? Did they pull it? I don't know whether they pulled it yet. I don't think so. I can I tell you that here in Los Angeles, still... that commercial ran... It, it seemed like it ran after every half inning of the Dodgers baseball game yesterday, and then the Angels played later on in the evening, and it ran on there, too. Well, like you say, we can't stop them from doing it. We can just ask them to be good corporate citizens. I understand, but you do understand that it, it, they will ultimately pull it after they've gotten publicity from people like you. And more people now, now than ever are going to see this commercial because of people like you. Well, because of organizations like ours, of course, we have to we have to live by our principles. I understand. We have a constituency that we represent. But are you concerned that, 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 that it's counterproductive to, to 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 take a stance like this? I'm I'm not being cute with you here. I'm not trying to be facetious. I'm I'm serious. If you took no stand at all, we wouldn't be doing this show, and they wouldn't be getting all this free publicity. And you wouldn't be seeing this commercial. Now the commercial runs on CNN, and they pay zero to run commercials on CNN and Fox News. It's running everywhere. And every time somebody puts out a statement saying how terrible it is, the commercial runs again. So there should be no complaints, no matter how distasteful something is? My opinion, as someone who works inside the belly of the beast, is that people like me, people like Carl's Jr. and CKE Corporation, uh, what they do is uh, we all, we, we, we go to bed at night praying, those of us who believe in a, in a higher power, we go to bed praying that somebody will protest. I, I, I swear I'd pay cash to have people stand outside my studio with picket signs and say that my show is the worst thing that ever happened. I, I would love to have that happen. Well, we are not uh, picketing the company or anything like that. We are being what we consider to be very responsible in it. We hope that the company will also be responsible. We don't think that the selection of that ad was particularly responsible, and we hope that they'll pull it. And uh, that's our stance on it. Uh, they'll pull it. At, they'll pull it after everybody's seen it a hundred times, and they'll say that, that. By the way, that's how these stories always play out. I don't know if you've paid attention to other controversies of this kind. After everyone's seen the commercial a hundred times, they're going to say that you were right, and they're trying to be good corporate citizens because you suggested it. And that's after they've already gotten their point across. Well, let's hope that this does not play out that way. Right, hey, hang on a second. They were talking with Al Mance. He's executive director of the Tennessee Education Association. We're talking about the commercials for Carl's Jr. and Hardee's for the patty melt that, that, that has a couple of uh, kids <laughs> singing about flat buns. Tom Likis. 1-800-5800-TOM. Oh. Tom Likis. Hey. I think women would enjoy sex more if they got into the Tom Likis show. Woo! From Hollywood, the Tom Likas Show. Thank you for tuning in. We are here with Al Mance, Executive Director of the Tennessee Education Association, which is protesting against a television commercial that you've probably seen because, especially if you watch sports, this spot is running all the time. Uh, in western states, it's for Carl's Jr. That's what we see here in Southern California. Other parts of the country, like the Midwest and the Southeast, they see the same commercial, but for another chain owned by the same company called Hardee's. And in case you have not heard the, the commercial or seen it, this is what it sounds like. It was once believed that the world was not round. Check out the buns. But flat. 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 Okay, class. Well, I like them really hot. I like them really flat. The I like them looking just like a pancake stack. Class, you got a butt minus. Flatter makes a better rear. Stand sideways, girl, you disappear. Hey. Flat buns. I like flat buns. I like the flat buns. The patty melt on flat buns. Only at Carl's Jr. There it is. Uh, by the way, uh, the, the, indeed, the woman playing the teacher in the commercial gets up on the, uh, the 
teacher's desk and starts dancing and then writhing around like a stripper. You bet. That's right. Uh, your calls here at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's Ryan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Great. Okay. Now, let's make sense of this. First off, Carl Jr. knew exactly what they were doing, like Tom said. Tom has Tom knows marketing. Everybody knows marketing. Sex sell, plain and simple. The age of the kids that are rapping, they look to be in their 20s, so they could be at college. So they're not targeting teenagers. Those kids look way older than any teenager I've ever met. I don't know about you, Todd. I, 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 people could agree with me or disagree. Well, there, the L.A. There. educational system, that, that, those look like seventh graders. To, to me, they don't. They look <laughs> like they're my age. Uh, well, they are your age, but they're seventh graders. Well, it, it's ridiculous. You're not, you're I not have a seventh the joke. grader. She's a, she's a girl, and she thinks it's hilarious. It's funny. Her teachers think it's funny. I live in, you know, I live in San Diego. I, I drive all the way down to Orange County just to listen to Tom's show, and I'm so glad he talked about this because I've talked to teachers. I have friends that are teachers. They think that whoever is boycotting this, this commercial, it's a commercial, that it, they're ridiculous. They have no, there's no stance on it. I know this, this gentleman from Tennessee has degrees way above me. I'm in the military. I, you know, I don't know marketing and I don't know teaching. My kids and my kids' teachers say that there's nothing wrong with it. It's not targeting anybody. It's targeting kids that want to eat hamburgers. Oh, my God, get over yourself. Just like the gentleman said, Robert said, if they were targeting wiener schnitzel for big, you know, big sausages, would would this gentleman be all up in arms? No, he wouldn't. He wouldn't care because it's all about sex, and they're worried about it. And it's ridiculous. And I cannot believe that in today's society, with everything that goes on, with everything that's on HBO, Showtime, and every other channel, I mean, I, look at some of the stuff on Disney Channel. I've seen teachers in certain shows in the Disney Channel that are wearing shorter skirts than that woman. It, it's in in so many ways, it's just recalculous in, in my book. I, I just cannot believe that this gentleman. Where? Why do the? I want to know why he thinks this is a problem. Why? Give me a good explanation. And I have a seventh grader to remind you on that, sir. Are you expecting me to respond to that? Yes, I want, would like to know why you think this is tar uh, targeting twelve-year-old boys for. Uh, for a hamburger. It's a hamburger. It's a dorky commercial about an old song that was in the 80s about, you know, I like, you know, the uh, Sir Mix a lot. He made a song in the we 80s, early with the 90s. Commercial. And it, it's a commercial. Tell me why you're not targeting HBO and Showtime and, you know, Survivor and all these other shows. Why aren't you targeting them? Just because they're portraying teachers? I have friends that are teachers that laugh at this commercial. Non-stop. They think it's hilarious. Explain they, to me I why you're doing your that. if your friends are adults and they are teachers and they choose to, go, to laugh at it, fine. Okay. When you have a commercial that is in a classroom with a teacher in the role as a teacher, with people who are playing the roles of students, we think that that's inappropriate. We think it's irresponsible, and we'd like for them to pull it. Thank you for the call, Ryan. Let's say hello to Anna on the Tom Like a Show for our guest, Al Mance. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Great. Great. Um, you know, Al, I don't know you. You sound a Republican, a right-wing Republican. You just, you know, you're, you're a hypocrite because in the fifth grade or whatever your standards are in Tennessee, you introduce the Constitution. And in the Constitution, you have what's called the First Amendment. And now, you know, you're showing these kids the First Amendment. Your teachers are showing them that. And then you come on these shows and you protest a commercial. A commercial about a girl who's dressed appropriately, and she's dancing around. She's not even old enough to be a real teacher. She's in a studio that is designed to look like a classroom. I mean, should I now boycott a restroom because real-life senators go into real-life bathrooms to solicit sex? I mean, you know, you have all these senators who are against, you know, uh, child pornography, who are against gay marriage. And, you know, they're the ones that are being caught now for, you know, these acts. So what does that say about you? Perhaps maybe you're seeing something sexual that no one else is seeing, and maybe it's all in your head. And, and because of that, you have the guilt inside of you, and, you try and you're trying to protest these commercials off the air. It, it's just silly. It's silly. If you don't like it, then don't turn the TV off. What do you do for a living, Anna? What do you do for a living? I'm a teacher. 
I'm a teacher, and right now I'm headed to Carl's Jr. I'm going to pick me up some burgers, and I'm going to download that ringtone. Because, you know what, I think this is, this is just ridiculous. You know, instead of doing this, I, I'm sure you have a lot of pool in your system. I think you should maybe focus your attention on No Child Left Behind, on the legalities of that. Maybe you should, you know, go in and, and talk about wages, the salaries, the teacher salaries. They're, they're just, it's, it's a joke for you to talk about a commercial. Maybe advocate like something like, you know, reading books to your children instead of watching TV. That's what you should be doing, not complaining over a silly hamburger commercial. It's upsetting. It's upsetting. I... And, and I just, you know, it, it, is, it is very... It, it is what we're seeing now in the media. I mean, it, our news is being censored. Now our commercials are being censored. I mean, it, it's just ridiculous. Anna, thank you for the call. Let's say hi to Tom on the Tom Likas Show for Al Mance, Executive Director of the Tennessee Education Association. Hello. Yo, what up, Tom? Not much, Tom. Uh, just chilling, just chilling. Uh, I got to say this. Uh, <laughs> it's a freaking commercial. It's a commercial. You know what I'm saying? I got the ringtone. I think it's hilarious. Me and my girlfriend love it. Um, it's a it's a ringtone. You need to go to you need to go after freaking McDonald's that advertise to kids talking about they'll be cool if they'll eat like a freaking double cheeseburger. We're not talking about kid obesity. We're it, it's it's retarded to get so mad about such a stupid commercial. It, it's a silly commercial. It airs for thirty minutes out of like. A whole like you know hour of just probably bad crap that you shouldn't be watching anyway. So let it go. It's just a commercial. You know what I'm saying? All right, Tom. Thank you, Kevin, on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Kevin. Hello. Yes. Oh, sorry, didn't hear my name. Um, yeah, I'm just calling uh, to let you know, Tom. I like your show with regards to all your discussions about women and all that stuff. I love it. Um, this subject, I'm curious to know what your take is on, uh, you know, at what point do you find, in your opinion, it's objectionable uh, for a company to advertise it? In other words, at what... You're asking, what you're asking me? To... I have an answer for you. Uh, the point at which uh, the time it becomes objectionable is when sales begin to decline because so many people are offended. When, when sales begin to decline? Yeah, because you've offended your target audience, yes. Right. So do you not think that it's okay for a group like Mr. Nance to object? To well, like well, it's a free country. God bless America. But uh, in, uh, unwittingly, he's only assisting Carl's Jr. and Hardee's at getting more attention to the commercial. Right. I agree with that. But I mean, I, 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 I will be, I'm going to be absolutely honest with you. I've done the same thing Carl's Jr. was doing. I have done things so controversial and just sat back at the radio station and waited for the protests to come in. Right. And, and I can see how that works. And, and that's, how I be, that's how I became a big name radio personality in every city I've worked. Because every city I go, I do something really offensive. Right. In the city of Boston, when I went on the air there, I, I assassinated Barney the Dinosaur during the day when children might be listening. I announced that I had killed him, and there was the sound of an explosion and the sound of what sounded like Barney going, ah! and, uh, and then uh, people called in and said how horrible it was, and it was in the Boston Globe or the Boston Herald, how terrible this was. And, and my show went from 12th place to 2nd place in the ratings, and uh, the numbers were never higher. Right, right. I mean, you're playing the game, but the point is... That's how the game's play. Yeah, but I mean, is it not... If nobody ever... Object, and I'm not a fan of Tipper Gore. But let's the way to object is the target demographic would stop patronizing the business, which they won't because this commercial is good, and the target demographic loves it. Well, the target demographic, you know, can go down to like six, seven, and eight year olds, and I mean, no, I that way, the tar no, no, the target at Carl's Jr. and Hardee's is men twelve to thirty four years old. That's the target. Okay, so let's start with 12-year-olds. I mean, if you have kids, you have 12-year-olds, you know, I could see where parents would object to this type of a commercial. Well, they can object I mean, to it, but, but again, the, the time the company has to be concerned is if people stop buying their product. Right, and, if, and obviously if someone like Mr. Nance comes out and raises awareness about it and enough parents see it and hear it and go, Whoa. Right now, the fact that we've just spent this hour talking about this, sales are going to go through the roof. Right. I, I, don't, I don't disagree with that. Thereby, only... thereby having the exact opposite effect that Mr. Mance would like to have. Mr. Mance, thank you so much for joining us this hour on the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show.